Now, this is getting a bit interesting, my friends. This screen right here may look a little familiar to some of you, as we've been extensively covering this area, because there is something going on within the Andaman Sea, and now even just off the northwest coast of Australia, and just wait until you see the amount of depth this buoy went. You are looking at a 160-foot drop that this buoy registered on two separate occasions on April 23rd going into the 24th, just days after we discussed another tsunami buoy within the Andaman Sea that on three separate occasions went into event mode in one of the most prone major earthquake and tsunami areas on planet Earth. And although in that video we could not link this specific situation to any earthquake whatsoever in the area, this buoy in fact has some deep, deep earthquakes that possibly could be linked to why this buoy was triggered, but to see a dip of over 50 meters is not something you see every day. Once again, my friends, the Andaman Sea and the Indian Ocean is exactly where we need to go today to figure out what is going on. I've got all the information we need on this topic and we're going to break it all down right here, right now. Let's go. <laughs> Alright everybody, April 24th, 2022, please excuse my voice today, it's a little raspy, but I'm sure we'll get through it. Now, just a few days ago, we posted a video on the Andaman Sea, the history of the area, and how it's able to produce major earthquakes and one of the biggest tsunamis we've ever seen, the Boxing Day Tsunami. And we noticed all this information based off of the tsunami buoys going into event mode on multiple occasions. And if you thought that information was weird, wait until you see this buoy that that's in event mode as we speak with one of the most dramatic drops of sea level change I have ever seen. Now in order to do this properly we got to look at this area as a whole. Now remember the Andaman Sea is up in this area here so the buoy we were looking at which still has some of that data you could see right here on April 20th that was the day we posted the video about the Andaman Sea buoy. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of this and I want you to look at the buoy we're talking about today. Now in the scale of things yes this is a far distance away away from the Andaman Sea buoy, but in the relative same part of the earth. And again, I couldn't help but notice this buoy is in event mode. So if we go ahead and click it, you can see that the chart is right here. And these two dramatic separate dips with this buoy are incredible. On this chart over here, it shows you the depth of the sea where these buoys are anchored to the sea floor, which allows us to see how far this dip was. And we're talking over 50 meters. And again, it's not just one time this went down to 50 meters then back up to its normal level and just a few hours later again another dip even a little deeper took place also rising back up to normal and then we could see another little glitch right there where it dropped down just a few meters before leveling off once again now i'm going to tell you right now these are not signatures you see all the time this is a rare event and it shows me once again as we talked about in the videos about the andaman sea that there is something going on on the sea floor in this part of the world now unlike the andaman sea situation where we could find no earthquakes that could have triggered that buoy we may have a few culprits for this one so what we're going to do is go ahead and re-click this buoy and it gives us coordinates of exactly where this buoy is and we do this by going down and clicking the view event details page and once that pops up not only does it give us a picture of the actual buoy it tells us where it is and the exact coordinates of where this buoy is anchored to the sea floor is right here so we're going to take these coordinates we're going to copy them all right and now that we are on google earth i went ahead and plugged in those coordinates we're going to click search and it's going to bring us exactly Exactly to the point where this new buoy we're going to be talking about lies. So let me get us oriented here, zoom out a little bit so we have an idea of where we're looking at. So once again, this is the area of the buoy in question now. This is the Andaman Sea area that produced that big tsunami in 2004. And now we're going to zoom into this area a little more. And now just so you guys know, keep in mind these ridges right here are areas where tectonic plates are meeting. And keep in mind these are the areas where the plates meet that are known for creating those mega quakes. If we come up into this area, 
That mega quake in 2004 took place right around this area. I'm sorry, mega thrust earthquakes are what these are called when these plates interact with each other. I've shown you the diagram in the past that shows how these plates are moving within each other. But again, back to the topic at hand, the buoy sits right in this area and now we need to look for some earthquakes that are capable of setting this buoy off. Now I have two different earthquake charts pulled up. We have our trusty volcano discovery, which tends to show us a little more about what's going on than the USGS does. You're looking at the last seven days of all magnitude earthquakes and you can see there's a long line of different earthquakes that follow this ridge line of these two tectonic plates stretching all the way down into the Papua New Guinea area, Indonesia up here, and then we got Australia down here. Now if we go to the USGS, this is also set for seven days all magnitudes and you can see there's just a skeleton version of earthquakes. By no means is the USGS showing every earthquake that takes place in this area. But there are two earthquakes within the area of the buoy we're talking about that are at depths that we don't usually see. Now I have one labeled right here which happens to be pretty close to where that buoy is. And if you look at the information right here you can see this was 102 kilometers in depth. And that's not even the deepest one. In fact, this earthquake right here to the north of that island right there, we go ahead and click on that and take a look at this number, 594 kilometers in depth. This earthquake took place on April 23rd, 2022, which also happens to be the same day that the buoy was activated. Now, something that's a little off to me is the fact that this was only a 4.3 earthquake, not very big at all but in fact, very, very deep. So just for reference, I brought up a chart that will do a conversion for us, and you can see 594 kilometers right there is equivalent to 369 miles. So this earthquake at well over 300 miles in depth, this one right here was 102 kilometers in depth. And then we have another one over here that I'm sure you're looking at. We're gonna go ahead and click that. And that was a 4.6 at 37 kilometers in depth. More times than not, in my experience and watching other channels that focus on earthquakes, these earthquakes seem way too small to trigger a tsunami buoy to then cause a dramatic dip as big as what we're seeing on these charts. And again, this happened two times in a few hour period. These dips go down nearly 160 feet each. This one right here is a little deeper. And I just don't understand or see how a 4.3 or even a 5.0 earthquake could cause such a dramatic change in sea level. Not to mention when these dips went down, they shot straight back up, back to where they were basically supposed to be at this time of day with the tides. And then boom, another dramatic dip came right back up. And then after a little while a smaller dip happened before we plateaued out and things seem to get back to normal. Now, are we dealing with something going on on the sea floor here? Are there collapses going on? Again, I'm very aware that these two buoys are very far away from each other and could be dealing with two separate situations of why they're being triggered. But I couldn't help but notice that they follow the same fault line. And again, this fault line right here was the exact reason why we had that mega thrust earthquake in 2004, causing the big tsunami that took the lives of well over 200,000 people. That fault line runs all the way down into this area to the north of Australia. And again, this area right here is very capable of causing mega thrust earthquakes. I'm not saying we had one or I'm sure it would be all over the news today. But again, there is real no logical explanation of why these dramatic changes in sea level are happening so often. And we're talking only four days ago that we were discussing the Andaman Sea tsunami buoy. So this is happening in rapid succession within a week of each other. And it's just making my mind run in circles about what exactly could be happening. So it's absolutely no surprise why we may be finding ourselves with a little more questions than answers once again. That's usually how it goes in this type of work. But I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. Questions or concerns or your own theories about what this could be, please leave down below. That comment section is very important. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel for updated notifications. And you're probably going to hear that again right at the end of this video. Shout out to Canada. I hope you were all enjoying the rest of your day and I'll be back here tomorrow with another video. Take care. Bye-bye. Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.